Hey all, we're about to do a little bit of cooking here. And uh, I had the recipe on the device I'm filming with, and I just opened up my phone. So, first thing is a cup of joe, a gift from uh, Santa Line Martial Arts in Ithaca, New York, the joe. Uh, mug was bought in uh, Long Beach Island, New Jersey. And I think I'm just about ready to uh, start this up. I think we have all our ingredients here, which maybe I'll describe as we go. And uh, uh, let's see, we want to, we got the oven going. So let's get the, uh, the dry, which we have uh, our flour, our baking soda, and our salt set aside. So there's our baking soda and salt and this little heartwood uh, piece and a little kind of ramekin kind of deal. And uh, pre-portioned our two cups AP flour, which is uh, the wampum of the age. A place for these. I think it's nice to kind of spread them in a little bit instead of just dumping one spot. You're kind of starting or mixing. And, uh, a lot of people will whisk here with uh, you know just a whole lot of arm movement, but then uh, we end up with flour going all over the place. So uh, this is the Q and A. This is what I was going to be doing anyway. So if you have a question about philosophy. Chinese martial arts, meditation, qigong, type it in, and uh, I'll try and uh, chat with you about that while I'm doing this. Well, since we don't have dough here, it's not really a concern that I'm going to overwork the flour, but I'm just spinning the whisk to create the stir and turning the bowl rather than, as I said, kind of doing this. So I have my empties, make a relatively organized and clean workplace. So I think we're pretty much mixed here. And then we'll start the, the next section, which will be the uh, wetter ingredients and uh, so I'm just going to double check that I have to match that first. So I'm going to match that first. Uh, then we have the peanut butter. We have uh, the jaggedy and the uh, granulated white refined sugar. We have uh, buttermilk, but I'm using a kefir here. Uh, oil and eggs. Uh, where's my oil? There's my oil. And I have my eggs and vanilla extract in the same dish. So let's start with the uh, with the banana, which we've already uh, peeled, just not mashed. Hey, Charlene, I'm trusting that you are feeling better. So we're gonna mash the banana. You could tell that we had uh, banana bread worthy banana here. This is a Cavendish banana, not the uh, Musa Bajju that we're growing here on Sunday Farm. So I'm just mashing this up. Might have been nice to use a fork, but I'm going to get back to using this whisk when I add the other ingredients. So even though the whisk is pretty well incorporated, most, uh, I would say about two of the three bananas on the inside of it. We're going to be okay. So, uh, if nobody asks a question, it's no matter to me because I'm still baking. But if you do want to check in with something like that, I am here. Okay, so I will uh, reread these as I do them. Thank you very much. Got the loquat syrup here already. And uh, 
use this little ring pin just to make sure I have it all laid out and pre-measured so really uh, I know I'm not missing an ingredient and uh, but I still like to I actually kind of lay them out in the order that the recipe calls for it so that I uh, can double check and make sure I haven't mixed anything but uh, I'm still going to read it as I uh, put it in uh, we're just gonna, so we'll do the uh, yeah the, the, the challenge will be the peanut butter so this is a half cup of smooth peanut butter so we're uh, we're at the Elvis stage at this point we have some uh, challah bread and a nice uh, skillet over there so we could probably have a very nice Elvis sandwich and uh, even some bacon if we wanted and of course steps from the toilet so that's good I'm gonna set that in the sink I have some uh, really warm water in there to help uh, loosen the uh, oily things uh, Questions? No questions. That's right. You're just uh, watching me and I'm not even, uh, you know, I'm not barefoot. I just stepped out of my slipper and I'm not a Contessa. It was like I got my guard up when I went to a kick. <laughs> okay, anyway, you should never pick your feet up higher than the counter level in the kitchen. You know, hygiene. Um, anyway, this, uh, this should be a gift for uh, somebody, by the, the thing I'm baking. Uh, so we got banana peanut butter. So here's our sugars. We got, uh, probably can't see too well, but we got the jaggedy powder and the granulated. And this is, uh, whisk together these. And that jaggedy will need some whisking. Whisk together the banana, peanut butter, sugars, buttermilk, which I'll start draining. So it takes a little bit of time here. Here's our oil, quarter cup of oil. I can uh, share this recipe with you if you happen to uh, have an interest. Vanilla eggs and vanilla extract. We have eggs and vanilla extract in this bowl already. Portion out, I think it's two teaspoons of vanilla extract, which seemed like uh, quite a bit for a recipe. So I'm going to. Uh, help this out here and uh, set this in the warm basin here and then uh, since this had just straight oil in it I'm going to uh, kind of give it a wipe with a uh, napkin and that will go into the fireplace which is just off camera that way it's not going down the drain and our um, Pipes do not absolutely love fats and oils. And I'm going to help the rest of this uh, fake buttermilk out, which is a uh, kefir, actually. I actually used a little bit less vanilla extract than it called for because this is this organic um, uh, organic uh, vanilla kefir. And uh, so if you're going to carry a little bit of vanilla into the recipe here. Now the kefir's a good thing to get down the drain since we have a septic here in the uh, woods of Connecticut. And, uh, and uh, this is how I portioned out the peanut butter so I get a little bit left there instead of wiping that and throwing it away or licking it. That will go into a mouse trap in the barn. You have to have a heart mouse trap so I use that little extra. Uh, so I think I just put everything in the wet, which I'll mix together. Still no questions. This has got to be really boring for you guys. I'm not uh, online here to prove that I'm a great chef. That's not the idea. Yeah, uh, so it says whisk together these. So uh, I'm going to see if I can help the rest get in. This is like the, one of those really nice old style Bowls. So I've left the uh, banana peel here rather than put it in the compost thing. I can uh, keep my tools up off the surface of the cutting board here, um, which is one less thing to clean. So the, uh, the uh, peanut buttery uh, used end of the spatula is in the air. 
this smells great. I rather like the, the newer, maybe they're not that new anymore, but they're new to an old cook. The uh, ones with the kind of rubberized bottom, you know, maybe it's like they, they just dip it in a little bit of wet rubber and it dries on, I guess. Uh, maybe it's silicone or rubber, but the non-slip ones I rather like. So I only kind of a little bit mash the banana, so I'm going to kind of press some of this into the sides. This is why I have a stronger bowl here instead of like a plastic one, so I can uh, work that banana against the sides. I like to uh, have just the right size bowl for the job that I'm doing. Uh, uh, I guess it's a little easier to clean, but that's not really my concern, but I like to uh, make sure, you know, because you always have some waste in the bowl, you know, uh, and this is like the chef's best friend for uh, waste, uh, really get so much out of any given bowl or pan. And uh, so if I have, you know, one cup of stuff and an eight quart thing, enough of it's going to spread on the sides, I'm probably not going to get a cup. Uh, out of the mixing bowl into the container. So I like to have maybe a two cup thing that I'm doing a one cup job in, and then there's not very much extra surface area to kind of uh, end up wasting stuff on. So this has got to be the most amazing video for people of all time. But uh, if you have a question, that's what I'm endeavoring to do. You don't uh, spend quite as many hours these days with uh, students on the property. So my thought was, well, maybe I can tend to people's questions this way while I'm otherwise sort of busy. So I, I feel like we have this pretty well combined and whisked and just as expected. The center of our whisk has come clean, and uh, I'm pretty certain we don't need the whisk again, but uh, uh, maybe I'll want this one, so I'm going to leave it back on the cutting board. So I think we're going to combine the wet and the dry here, uh, and uh, let's see. Wet and good flour, so what I'm thinking here is that I might like to use a different size for that. I'm trying to see if that's true. I think it might be. I have this brand new bowl and this thing has got to be six pounds. <laughs> it's crazy heavy. We just got it at the uh, local. So I'm sure it's wet and dry. That's what it always is, and uh, so uh, there's pretty much no waste here where we just have the dry ingredient, so that'll pretty much just need a rinse. Uh, I was kind of on the fat first time using these bowls, so I want to see, and it's pretty good timing because the oven says 30 seconds till it's at the temperature. It's uh, 350. Uh, but I set this to 325 because it's convection, and that seems to be generally what I'll do, 25 degrees less uh, than is called for. Hi, Sue. Uh, oh, I see Harry's online doing the Kong Jin push hands at me from uh, across the way. So, well done. That was a good push. Okay, so uh, pour the right thing into the pot mixture. Fold together. There's our spatula. And we just want to completely combine it, just like really any other cake. And there are no, you know, we're looking for raw flour spots. And then the chocolate chips, which is why everybody's here. Uh, and save for distractions, that would argue that we've probably done everything accurately, which means scientifically we're at a three percent chance now, having followed the recipe. Um, precisely, we're at a, 
absolutely a 3% chance of uh, having it come out okay. <laughs> so here's my spatula. And uh, I'm going to sort of trade my surface here. I don't think I want to... My cutting board can turn a little bit there. So, so let's get into the mixing. The oven's at temperature. The... Uh, the loaf pan is ready. Yeah, that's most of it. Probably done 80% of the wet in here. And I'm gonna work it. I work it's a strong word. We're not kneading dough, but I'm gonna combine it here. And I wanna have a better idea of where the dry spots may be and feel like I still have a bit of reserve here. Boy, this is a fun bowl to use. Wow. Maybe I'll uh, give you a sense of what it looks like here. I don't know if I'm able to post these pictures uh, in a live stream comment. I don't know if you get the pictures there, but that's okay. Oh, wow, well, that's great. I feel like no dry flour. I still don't see any questions. Hi, Pam, Carl. Hey, 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 Sifu Butler. Oh, my goodness. All right, people, we have to all enter panic mode because an actual chef is here, which means we get our mantis fists and then we begin stirring, making sure to use the back, the stance, the lower back, the stance, connect to the forearms, and then think carnivorous destruction. Good. So that is our mantis uh, combining. Now make sure that you use plenty of hornet heads and uh, gecko lips in your bread recipe. If you are a true mantis chef, you will understand that these are really important you know, elements for the, the lipids and uh, calcium uptake channels. And so, and plus, you know, it's the cool factor if you're a mantis, I mean, my goodness. So if there's somebody else here, this is the part you can give them to lick, but I'm just going to give that a little soak. Personally, I can't imagine cooking without a towel over my shoulder. And uh, I'm just letting that fill, so I'm going to combine the rest of this wet and form my final batter. Yeah, it's a little bit of a loose batter. So this is just like an experiment of mine, you know, I'm filming a lot of sessions doing of course a lot of kind of zoom lessons for people as you know, we should taste it very very important that's what you're allowed to do in a commercial kitchen just put your finger in lick it and obviously go for a second with the same finger because you've already established where the uh, the health inspector is right they're front of the house and so you get to do that and then you quickly move all the food that's on the floor up until the health inspector checks their clipboard and then you put that stuff back on the floor and you take other stuff that's on the floor and put it up in that same one place that is off the floor or just just in time, moments before the health inspector uh, looks into that dry storage area okay so I think we have a batter so I will be double checking this looking at that hey <laughs> yay Hi Liz. Hi Brittany. Okay, so uh, Liz is on. She just enjoyed uh, some baked goods from this very countertop last week. So I'm just going to double check it. Gently stir in the chocolate chips. All right. And of course, uh, you know, with flour, uh, obviously, you know, if you can weigh it and that's what your recipe is, then you're really talking, you know, 35 grams of flour. But if you're using by the cup, really important to have it level and not packed same with uh, sugar salt baking soda that sort of thing 
Um, but with chocolate chips, it should always be over level, right? What we might call heaping, if that's the right word, because you are definitely going to be eating some uh, while you cook. So that by the time you get to the point of using it, you have a level of organic, bittersweet, semi-sweet chocolate chips, or perhaps even a concavity, which we won't tell anybody about. Okay, so I'm going to just fold these in. It's funny, I don't even want chocolate chips right now. <laughs> but, I mean, I'm being watched. We have to teach our children well, right? As the song says. Okay, so, it's kind of a, a wet batter, so pretty easy to fold in. Um, back to my new basin. Sip of coffee. I think we're ready to put it in the pan. And this is a heavy bowl. This is going to be a lot of fun. I uh, still don't see questions. I haven't used this, so that's going to go into the warm soak. And uh, we have used uh, eggs in this recipe, too, from Doherty Farm right here in Killingworth. So thank you, Liz. Okay, so I will, again, it's very boring. It's like watching an engineer engineer things. Um, smoothing the top into a bake into the little bit. Okay, good. Uh, I already have my toothpick here, right? That's how crazy I am. I have the pan already uh, greased uh, with a little parchment paper. This is going to be really heavy, so it's going to be a lot of fun to do. Uh, man, this is such a, <laughs> such a heavy bowl. Now, I didn't cut my parchment paper, I just uh, sort of eyed it, so I have to actually be very careful putting this in. Uh, I see a little bit of dry flour here, so I arrested my spill and pour just to get that. That's one reason I'm going slowly. But uh, since this isn't really cut, I have... Uh, you know, this four inch wide pan, but I probably have like a two inch wide, maybe I can show you. I have like, at, you know, at times, like a two inch wide uh, path for the uh, batter. So I'm trying to go slowly that this doesn't all overshoot the parchment. And I tell you what, I guess this isn't meant to rise very far because I have the appropriate sized um, loaf pan and it sure is filling it. But it's nice to trust the recipe and where the recipe airs, should it, we can look forward to cleaning the convection oven, which, let's be honest, it probably needs. So that's okay. So I didn't see anybody log in that's in town, apart from Liz. So Liz, this should be done in a little over an hour. If you want to come by, I can leave you, I mean, the whole thing, I guess, but I can leave you some of it. And uh, I don't think this would make it to Harry in New Jersey, because all the different mail handlers between here and then would most assuredly eat it, having smelled it. I mean, peanut butter and banana and chocolate. There's no way that makes it through the mail system. Good. Oh, that looks like it might have been a question. I see a longer thing, so let me walk over there and see. Walk, it's like one step. Wish I could try some. I have to go run errands. Would love to talk soon. Looking to have <laughs> Uh, I can mail it to Ithaca, Brittany, but we, you know, in fact, that's funny. I mentioned that, I don't know if you saw the top of the episode, but I am enjoying coffee sent direct from you in this very mug. And that's how this whole stream started. So deeply grateful. Thank you. Um, but uh, yeah, why not? I'll drive to Ithaca with cake for sure, especially if I get some uh, Korean tacos out of the deal. Okay. <laughs> the, 
I love how the uh, the the actual chef logged in. <laughs> and he quickly said, oh, I have to go. I said, where to be? <laughs> That's fantastic. Yeah, if you need to talk, man, reach out. Send me a note. I'm uh, spending probably 20 hours a day uh, teaching and ministering to people. So if you happen to be uh, in need in some way, you know, please. And that goes for anybody. Please uh, reach out and um, I would endeavor to be there for you. Here's the fun part. Very important, you know, a rubber spatula. This saves you a lot of money, saves you a lot of grief. So uh, it's really nice to have a whole selection of them, uh, different sizes and shapes and, and lengths. Uh, but particularly when you're having a batter like this, you want one that will definitely fit in your mouth. Okay, back into the hot soak. I'll set this to soaking now too, and I think, oh man, that is like really full for a bread, but <laughs> I guess we'll have to watch it and we'll see. That <laughs> seems crazy to me. All right. I imagine we just put it in, set a timer. So it says an hour to an hour and 15 minutes. So I'm going to do an hour and then uh, add more time if we need. So what I'm doing is I'm setting it for an hour and 15 minutes. This oven will turn off when it reaches the time. And uh, I'm going to set a timer on my phone for one hour so that I have a an opportunity to uh, check it and uh, let's say it needs a few more minutes than that the oven doesn't start uh, dropping its temperature uh, because I set the oven itself for one hour so the uh, the oven set for the max that was recommended in the recipe or, or suggested as uh, as uh, most likely um, and uh, so I feel like the oven will do the maximum and I will check it before we reach that maximum and I won't risk the oven shifting temperature on me in those two or three minutes between my alarm going off and actually getting to the oven. Put a pan on the shelf below it just in case. Yeah, great. Yeah, I already, I, that's exactly what I did. <laughs> so good, good job. I actually have a, these are not the one I'm using now, but I have a series of little pans here that I get to, uh, use uh so yeah perfect 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 uh i don't think i saw any questions uh and that was the whole point of this thing so glad you enjoyed it i suppose i could just keep it on for one entire hour <laughs> uh while this cooks but there we go i guess i'll there I'll end with our little hot bath here you guys have been uh, supported here as a uh, by an orchard blend of non-GMO, gluten-free, vegan uh, dried fruits, and that was uh, actually sort of my tripod for the iPad. Here's uh, a look at our little soak. We had a soak set up uh, with uh, really hot water, so that's kind of cutting away everything. Then we made the other soap uh, in the steel mixing bowl, and there's our large one. So this is been uh the uh uselessness of me thanks for joining